So the reason I'm here today is in my wallet. I'm a pretty normal teenager. I'm a college freshman. I love spending time with friends. I enjoy playing tennis. I'm a huge Boston sports fan. Yet nestled between my school ID and my gym card, I carry a brain donor card. Here's why. A silent epidemic torments countless athletes who remain undiagnosed or misdiagnosed. Post-concussion syndrome, or PCS. PCS is defined by prolonged concussion symptoms for over one to two months. Symptoms include headache, fatigue, memory and cognitive deficits, irritability, sensitivities to light and noise. PCS permeates every part of your life. It alters work and school performance, self-esteem, and relationships. Five years ago, I played soccer, hockey, tennis, and I skied. I defined myself as an athlete. It consumed my time. It was my social life. Then I had a life-altering concussion. It seemed like a pretty mundane hit during a Sunday club soccer game. I had definitely taken worse. But my vision blurred, the world was spinning, and I could barely tell which side of the field I was on. But I shook it off, as I'd done so many other times. But this one was different. I've had a headache every day since that day in April 2013. Sometimes my vision blurs, I struggle to memorize things, hence my notes ca note cards, and I get severe migraines. This is the reality of post-concussion syndrome, and even the best doctors can't tell me when this will go away. I remember my doctor talking initially about a concussion bell curve, the two days to three weeks-ish that it was normal to recover from a concussion. But my stress level rose as I grew further and further from the bell curve until I was a complete outlier. Only then was I officially diagnosed with PCS about a year after my initial injury. But unfortunately, I'm not really an outlier. There are countless other kids and adults out there struggling with PCS. They just stopped talking about it, as I did for a while. We don't have a lot of statistics, though researchers estimate that somewhere between 5 and 30% of people diagnosed with concussion will suffer with PCS. Anecdotally, I can tell you it's a lot. I've been astonished by the number and range of people who've reached out to me. Middle schoolers, parents, NFL players, they all want to understand why they still have symptoms. In high school, everyone has a vision for who they are. When you were a teenager, what defined you? What were you involved in? And what if it all went away? My concussions led to a series of losses. The loss of my beloved sports teams, some of my memory, and honestly, a lot of friends. I think oftentimes friends just don't know what to say, and they think that their silence is neutral, but it's truly deafening. I remember a pivotal conversation with my club soccer coach once my doctor told me contact sports were no longer in the cards. I had to tell him that I'd played my last soccer game and say goodbye to the best mentor I'd ever had, another loss. He said, we all become fans at some point. You just became one a little earlier than expected. He made it seem so natural that one door closes and another opens. And that really gave me comfort and closure with contact sports. And so I realized that I needed to get back in the game, even if it had to be a new game. So in ninth and 10th grades, I completely reinvented myself. I became a writer and editor for the school newspaper. I was appointed to the disciplinary committee begrudgingly took up golf as my low-impact, non-contact sport, and I rode crew. But my most important work started when my doctor asked me to do a live Nesson interview with him about concussions during a Bruins game. This opened the door to a whole new game. At another Boston Children's event, I addressed donors, doctors, and NHL players. After my speech, so many current and retired players came up to tell me that they had similarly had headaches for years. This shocked me. One current player told me that my experiences made him realize that he probably had post-concussion syndrome. But he kept repeating to me, nobody talks about this. Nobody talks about this. And I realized that this problem transcended me. This is really common with professional athletes. They believe that admitting to concussions will negatively impact their careers in sports and beyond. 
A current NFL player told me that he knew he was putting himself in danger by playing through a bad concussion, but knew he had to sign a contract that year. A former player turned investor confided, who would trust me with their money if they knew? And the silence is broader than professional athletes. Many student athletes don't report concussions, fearing it will destroy their college recruitment chances. The ones who do are often labeled malingerers by school administration. They're not accommodated or believed. They're losing friends, activities they love, and sense of self. Worn down by daily headaches, many become depressed, isolated, and silent. So although getting involved in concussion advocacy was never my intent, I felt a sense of duty after so many trusted conversations. I was a 15-year-old kid who got concussed, and I inadver inadvertently walked into a national crisis. But I wanted to give other athletes the information I hadn't had. I felt I could be a voice for others who were silently soldiering on with PCS. I felt I could use my story to do so, and I knew I had a lot less to lose than these professional athletes did. So when another severe concussion forced me to take a medical leave and defer my junior year of high school, I was devastated, but determined to use that year to combat the silence on this topic. So in 2015, I fully transitioned from athlete to advocate. I was very fortunate to be introduced to someone even more passionate about brains, Chris Nowinski. Before our breakfast meeting, when you aren't in school, you have time for breakfast meetings, I Googled him, and here's what came up. Chris rocked the red spandex, I spared you those pictures, as the arrogant Chris Harvard in the WWE from 2001 to 2003. I'm not gonna lie, I was a little bit terrified. His stats were like 6'6", 250, um, and his living was choreographed carnage, but I did muster up the courage to go meet with him, and thankfully, this is the guy I met at breakfast. A lot less scary. Um, Chris founded the Concussion Legacy Foundation, or CLF, with a focus on CTE and professional athletes, but he was making waves in youth sports. Our meeting ended with Chris unexpectedly offering me an internship, and I joined CLF to shine the light on student athletes and post-concussion syndrome. Since then, I've connected with dozens of PCS sufferers, like this sophomore football player from rural Georgia who suffered from PCS after a major hit on the field. When he didn't recover within that bell curve, his doctors misread this great kid and told his parents he was probably on drugs and to evaluate who he was hanging out with. Fortunately, his parents got him to a concussion specialist instead. Part of the reason I'm here at TEDx is because I'm one of the lucky ones. Not that I'm cured, not that I haven't gone through a lot. It's a variety of factors. I have incredibly supportive parents a mom who scheduled appointments with every concussion expert on earth, and a dad who, as much as he loved sports, never pushed me to play again. I live in Boston, home to great medical institutions, and I've been introduced to unbelievable mentors who've gone through PCS. But without each of those things, I could so easily be one of the walking wounded out there. So those are the people who I try to reach and who inspired me to launch my own website called Headstrong. I want it to be a place to celebrate steps forward and really to connect with other people who get it. I provide pretty practical tips, like tucking dog bags in your prom clutch for when you almost throw up in your date's car on the way to junior prom. Just tips your doctor probably isn't telling you. Um, so whether you're an NFL player having the best season of your life and looking to stay ahead of this, or a high schooler living your worst nightmare with PCS, a concerned parent, or anyone else, I want to help and you're not alone. And if you have PCS, maybe you'll change schools like I did junior year and find incredible friends and an administration who understands PCS and wants you to succeed, or that doctor who knows what to do and will fight for you. Or you'll become an advocate and change the experience for future athletes and PCS sufferers. So if you're feeling alone and you can't see an end in sight, I promise you it's going to get better but I need your help to make it better. We need to stop fostering a dangerous sports culture. Affirming concussion symptoms enables athletes to stop playing after a concussion without penalization to allow them to recover. And we should eliminate tackling, heading, and checking under age 14. These measures can reduce the number who will experience PCS after multiple concussions, as I did. It could have spared me six years of headaches. We need to change the tone 
Coaches need to set a precedence. Teammates need to look out for one another. Schools need to accommodate. Families and friends need to understand. So I'm asking all of you to continue the conversation we've started today. Talk with people in your network who could be affected. Your neighbors who play football, your niece who'll play college soccer, or those in your network who can make change. Your work colleague who coaches, your school's principal, your family pediatrician. So much change can come from conversation, and you can really have a massive impact, no pun intended. Because of PCS, I have a new sense of self I could never have imagined, but able to help others, I feel I ended up in the right, wrong place. I want future athletes to have the information I didn't. I intend to contribute to a cure, and I want to leave a long-term legacy. So at midnight on my 18th birthday, I pledged my brain to the Concussion Legacy Foundation with the commitment to carry that card with me for science, for the future of sports, and especially for all of those soldiering on with PCS. Thank you.